I didn't do anything yet. So uh, yeah, uh, the talk strides. Uh, I will talk about distributed uh, system, but more of like the distributed team side. Um, so good morning. Hopefully you make it to the after party, but you're still looking refreshed. So uh, probably the ones are missing uh, stayed all, all night. Uh, so let me start with a question. Who is working from home? Oh, more than I was expecting, but yeah. Um, who is working from a co-working space? Okay, some of you. My guess was 10%, which is why only one of the 10 hands is uh, colored. Um, and who is working from an office? Okay, it's still the majority. So, yeah, that's a typical setup. Um, I was probably more at the 80% uh, kind of guess, but uh, still kind of right. So, if you are working from an office, do you have this one day a week you can work remotely thing? Is it Friday? Like most of the time? Like treat it as a slacking off day. You do proper work from Monday to Thursday and then Friday is like, okay, let's chill. Um, no deployments to production because you don't do it over the weekend, the kind of things. Um, so, I worked previously at some uh, Polish startups. Uh, we were like um, pretty lucky with having a pretty good remote work policy. But I think it's not the average. Uh, Definitely, these were still like office-based companies, so they had headquarters in Warsaw. And uh, the majority of people were working from that office. Only engineering was kind of like shifting towards, okay, maybe I can do the same thing remotely uh, and such. Um, I now work at Elastic, which is fully distributed, and I work only remote. Um, and I work actually from home. So you might have heard about us um, with the following products we have. So it was previously called the ELK, um, now it's the Elastic Stack, um, where we are the creators of Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, um, and now also Beats, so that's why the name changed to not add the letters uh, to, uh, to the abrasion. And uh, we built distributed software, so Elasticsearch itself is uh, distributed by design, and uh, you, so you can basically add nodes to, to the cluster and uh, everything's working. But today, you had plenty of talks, even including Elastic but other, and other technical talks. I wanted to go more into the uh, team side of things um, and focus on that part, basically. But still, if you have questions regarding our technology, we have a stand. Um, I'm here, uh, so free to, uh, to reach out uh, if you have any of technical th things. So let me start with this image. So this is our logo. Uh, you can even see it in the right uh, corner. Um, and it's not a flower. It's a cluster, so it's it's meant to represent what we are doing as a company from our product side, but also like the team side. So it's like mixed, distributed, diverse, um, unstructured kind of thing. Uh, so that's how we also shape our product and and the team itself. Um, so to to give you like a perspective of who we are, I wanted to share some numbers, like how many employees we have, how many countries we span, languages we speak, and time zones. And um, to be honest, it's not that easy to keep track of everything because I was even thinking, okay, I could just tell you 87 to everything um, because there are like every Monday there are new, new people coming. People are moving between countries. Maybe that's not that frequent that they learn new languages, but still, time zones, countries, employees, that like changes over time. Um, but still, to give you some like idea of how that looks like, it's about that size. So we are now over 1,600 people um, spread across 40, 40 countries, speaking 30 different languages, and we have almost all the time zones. Uh, so, um, and I've changed the employees to all stations, so we call ourselves uh, that way, like the Googlers at Google. Uh, so that's our naming. Um, yeah, and we're constantly hiring. So. Um, we are growing really fast, which is kind of easier in a distributed manner because you don't have to buy new office spaces. It's just home offices, as you will learn. We still do have offices. That's easier to track. So uh, we have uh, 27 offices by now. Um, and uh, the main purpose of these offices is for headquarters or sales and marketing. So it's not about engineering. So engineering is mostly, um, engineers are mostly working from home. So to give you an example, we don't have an office in Poland. Uh, the closest one would be Berlin. 
Um, and in the Berlin area, we have uh, like 30 people in the area of Berlin, and only two to four people go to an office actually, uh, because that's all right. Uh, they don't have to. And the reason why they don't go could be weather, could be commute, could be preferences, whatever. So it's, there are like spaces you can join if you have some nearby, but you don't have to. So that's, um, we, we don't track it. Um, um, yeah, you can just work wherever you want. Um, and actually, we are distributed by design. Not our products, definitely, which were like the foundation is that our distributed have to um, scale horizontally. Uh, but also the company. So it all started uh, with uh, these four founders um, who were actually in different cities and countries uh, where they, when they started the company. So it was like Germany, um, Israel, the Netherlands. Uh, so they were all in different places. So they were e like kind of forced to work in a distributed manner and to use some of the tooling to make that even work because there was no like way of going let's go for a coffee and make some decisions or make decisions at the water cooler, which is kind of like the ultimate spot where you make decisions at most companies, um, from what I've seen. Um, so they weren't like able to do that, the, the, the same kind of thing. So um, they had to email a lot, write things down, uh, agree, like have a consensus on things, um, and um, yeah, over communicate basically. So. Definitely, it's an easier start for companies. So if you have a traditional company with headquarters in a single place and then want to shift towards like distributor or remote work, that is possible, but definitely dif more difficult than uh, starting remotely or starting distributed because um, yeah, it's just natural uh, for how we work. Um, and I use the term distributed many times, not only because of the software, but we also like the term distributed instead of remote because there is no like remote kind of thing with satellite. We don't have, okay, we do have headquarters, but it's more of like the formal kind of thing. It's not like the decision-making process is happening in that office. It's like all over the place. Um, so there is no central, central place to make decisions and uh, you can basically work from everywhere. You have to have internet, of course. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that, that's the freedom of like, of, of your, um, you have the choice basically. So. As I mentioned, we have some offices. This is, for example, the London office uh, we have. And if you are based in London or have a different office nearby, you definitely can go there, especially if you like the office environment. Maybe you like the snacks, the ping pong table, and hopefully the coworkers. Uh, so yeah, if you have the office, then, then probably go there. Um, you don't have to be there like all the time, even if you have an office nearby. It could be w one day a week or something. If you don't have an office nearby, or um, but still want to get out of home, or you can't really work from home, like home, your home, um, there are co co-working spaces, right? Even in Warsaw, there are plenty of them. So um, you can still go to those places, and the company will pay that, uh, so the expenses, so it's not on you. Um, and the benefit would be probably still that you have people around, you have all the goods like snacks, a ping pong table, probably. Uh, and such, um, sometimes even co-workers, if there are like popular cities, you can even, you know, have a colleague or uh, in the same city and work in the same co-working space. But that's up to you, basically. And ultimately, the most popular option is the home office, which is, um, yeah, which is pretty um, flexible in terms of uh, where you do things, how you do things, how you set it up even. Uh, so if you don't have an office nearby, or you don't want to go to a co-working space or don't have one nearby because some people just live in small cities and you don't have like uh, co-working spaces around, or for whatever reason, you have a family. Um, yeah, it could be plenty of, uh, of things. Uh, so you can then have an home office. And also the company will provide you with uh, a setup so you can get a proper chair, a proper desk, and everything you need, basically a monitor, a uh, laptop, obviously, and, and such. So. Um, Elastic will also provide you with some money to, to get it up and running. Um, and that's actually my home office, so that's my setup. Um, so a desk uh, in some of the bedrooms um, where I live. But sometimes my home office looks like this. So this is uh, a summer house where I was. Uh, we have good internet connectivity in Poland, so that's possible to, to do. So it was like a mobile plan. Um, and sometimes it looks like this. So I was even working directly from the beach, which sometimes make my colleagues jealous because they, you know, they were in the city. I was like having 
the, um, the C in the background so while talking to them. But still, if I uh, kind of like would hide that, um, it, it would still be cool. And the coverage, as I said, is also good, especially in Poland, so uh, I was lucky with that. And last but not least, uh, also Greece this summer, so plenty of options. Nobody cares really, nobody knows. I don't have to say to anybody, okay, I will be in that place. Um, it's more of like the background, as I mentioned, that people recognize, okay, oh, you're in, different, uh, in a different place. Yeah, I am, but that's, that's, uh, that's the story. So there are some difficulties, so especially when you start uh, working uh, remotely. Um, it's your first day, and what do you do? So you sit on your desk, in your apartment and how would you start? So to make that experience a bit easier for you, we have a, a thing called X-School, which is basically our onboarding process. So what we do is uh, we bring um, all the new joiners together. Um, we bring them to our headquarters actually in Mountain View um, because it's the, the biggest office we have and also uh, on average the most management is based there. But uh, as I said, they're also like in different places, but. Uh, the density is, is bigger in that place. So you can meet the people, right? The, the founders, uh, the VPs and such. Um, we, we do this every month, so that's a group. I'm somewhere here. Um, that's a group of 140 people uh, that were joining uh, with me uh, in that month, uh, so it was pretty huge. Um, it's a week-long event, so you learn about all things that from my engineering perspective, it could be also sales, finances, marketing, and such, and the other way around, right? So people working in sales will um, learn about how engineering works and all the things, our products. Uh, we also do some volunteering at that time, some sightseeing, fun day, and also hanging around, because that's also one of the purposes. Especially as we are working from home, are most of the time isolated, we also try to have some opportunities to uh, meet people at the company. Um, so that's one of the activities. And at the very bottom of that picture, you can see a, a big heart, uh, that's called the elastic heart. Um, and where did this come from? So it was an email um, from Shai, which, uh, who's our CEO. Uh, he wrote it to everybody, uh, so that's the all prefix. And he just said, I love you all. Okay, and that's then in the body of that message is, that's it, I just wanted you to know. So people start replying with also hard emojis and all the images you, you can imagine. And one of them was this heart. So it not only combines a heart, but also like a logo inside that. And by now we also have stickers with that, so you can grab some. But these things just happen. So um, we, we, we send a lot of emails, some are very um, yeah, spontaneous, I would say, and that's one of them. Um, so, um, this definitely took more effort, so uh, Michal, our creative director, had to combine lo uh, the logo with the heart shape, um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's kind of still alive. And not only the, uh, the sticker is alive, the thread is still alive, so it's uh, over three years now, and there is a recent post a couple of days ago uh, where somebody, again, sent like this one, right, so just saying, okay, I love you. So I, I talked about like getting together. Um, engineering especially works like most of engineering works remotely and from home. So we don't see each other like um, in person uh, very often. But we try to still do that um, at like every six months. So what we do is we have a thing called engineering all hands where we bring all the engineers in one place um, so we can spend some time together. And it's like, um, team time, but also cross team time and fun days, uh, just to hang around, having dinner, having lunch together, uh, basically uh, doing all the things we couldn't have done uh, over the internet. And uh, this is from like two weeks ago. Um, we were, everybody was uh, from engineering was in Toronto. Uh, so we had to fly everybody in, in Toronto, uh, in a single place. We also tried to do it as a single hotel where the venue is, so everything is happening in a single place. Um, and even the photo is in the shape of a heart, if you can see that. So again, the elastic heart is here. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was a good time. 
Engineering all hands is not only engineers, so marketing will also join us. Uh, HR will join us because we were closely with each other. So it's, um, it's then only that, for example, sales has a separate, let's say, gathering, so they do it more of tied to the financial years, um, and it's pretty a different vibe at these, like, uh, they call it the sales kickoff. Um, so we do it like separate for engineering, sales, and also support does a separate thing because they just have to. So whenever support is uh, going to an event like that, engineering has to take over support for a week, and then we do the shift once again. But that's also a good like, test to see if we are able to run it, um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so again, elastic card in here. Um, but sometimes we also want to meet everybody. So we do the global audience where everybody from every department is getting together. This one is from Orlando in May earlier this year. It's about 1,400 people in a single place. I haven't counted, but yeah, these were the numbers. Um, so this one was uh, in Orlando, Florida, um, because it was just difficult to get a place uh, so big to not only run the venue, which is kind of possible, but also that everybody gets a room at the same place. So that was one of the few options we got. So as I said, we do it like every six months. So the next uh, will be, again, like May, and it will be a global all hands. So we have to bring like by then probably like 2,000 people together uh, in a single place. So I don't know. Um, how the logistics looks like, but it looks complicated. But so we do that to hang around. Um, and global all hands, we, we mostly also have like uh, some updates on the company level, but then also team time, cross team time, kind of like an internal venue like we have today to speak about topics that we cover on a day to day uh, to do some talks and uh, yeah, have discussions. So. The last uh, one I will mention is also volunteering time off. That's yet another opportunity where you can spend time together. You don't have to do it in the team, but many people do. So we get like um, five days a year to do some volunteering. Um, the company will pay for that. So this one is, I don't know where exactly, but they were like building a house for a family. Um, so that's again, so all the blue t-shirts, so these are helper notes uh, from the cluster naming. Um, had uh, helped to build that house, basically. So that's yet another option. So um, the things we do and the things we uh, we we also like want to celebrate. Uh, we uh, and the things. So how we work and who we are and basically what makes Elastic Elastics. We call it our source code. So we have written it down, and uh, I wanted to share some of these. Um. So one is home dinner. Um, so this one is about like. I said we had like so many people and so many countries and so many time zones. So, um, and there is a thing to um, like work-life balance. So it's more about in that direction, but it's really meaning that if you want to be home for dinner, you can, right? So you don't have to be in meetings. If you want to uh, play with your kids in the, mid in the middle of the day, that's totally fine. You want to go out for um, on a bike or run midday, that's cool. Just um, if you want to like make sure no, nobody will schedule a meeting in that time, just place something in your calendar so you say it's blocked, um, don't, uh, don't count on me on that meeting. So it's totally fine to spend your time uh, how you want, uh, how, how you wanted to structure your day basically, and it's mostly about priorities, right? So if family hopefully is priority for you, uh, you are free to um, set it up that it works for you, and then only um, combine it with uh, your company efforts. Yet another thing is space time. So um, this is one we have. It's like it's one week uh, per quarter. You can just take off from your le regular schedule and do things, whatever basically. So you can. It could be a side project you, or a feature you wanted to work on, but has l like low priority on the roadmap. It could be like learning a new skill or even new language if you want to. So for example, I want to play around with Go or. Uh, a bit of notes, and that's possible. So I can take a week off and just play around. Uh, the outcome doesn't have to be a project. It doesn't have to be even a feature. Some of them really are then features on our in our product uh, by now, but uh, it's not the rule, right? So it, it could be, as I said, learning a new skill or basically doing anything for a week. Um, basically, we, we trust uh, our employees, and sometimes they, they just summarize it with a short demo, like 30 minutes explaining what they did during the week, but that's it. So there's no like, you know, 
real outcome of that I if you don't have it. Um, okay, that's the next thing would be it depends. So that would also be the answer to that one, but I will just explain this in a bit. So it depends. You can take it however you want. So uh, you can do it like a day a week if you want to, because you are just brainstorming things and you want to need uh, you need the time in between. It could be a whole week. Uh, basically, we we take it like more of like if you want to have a good timing, you take it more like uh, PDO or VTO, right? So time off where you okay, you don't want to hurt the team um, performance, but um, you're free to take it. So whatever works for you. I can't even imagine it could be like two hours a day for a week and then five weeks. I don't know. So you, it just has to sum up to to a week, and that's. Yeah, it is elastic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and in, the rules also said let's keep it to one week for now, and probably if it were like a great idea, we'd probably say, okay, you can do more, right? So, um, but we just say, okay, on average it should be a week. So we, we even have to encourage people, please take the week, because not everybody's taking it. So it's not like, you know, there is the, uh, like the limit, but um, we still have to uh, encourage people to take it. So then coming to it depends. That's the most popular answer we, we always giving. So if you ask that question, I would say, first I would say it depends and then have a like, deep dive in that discussion. Because so many things like, are not a single answer, right? Even if you ask the, the question you get, how many shards should I, should I use elastic? Yeah, it depends, I don't know. Should be one, should be five. It depends really, so um, it depends on your use case. Uh, so we use it a lot and it's just saying, okay, you know what, um, there isn't a good answer. I want to share my, like, uh, the things I know and have a discussion and let's figure it out basically, right? So we use it um, too frequent probably, but uh, that's one of the things um, we are free to, free to do. Then progress, simple perfection. So that basically is like we, we should care more about progress and having some progress than doing the perfect thing. So because it will slow us down, right? If you do like a pixel perfect design or great, let's say, code, like covering all the edge cases, it will just take longer. It's, there is also the Pareto rule, where you do like 80% of your work in 20% of the time, and then the 20% and 80% of the time. So we try to really do the 80% in 20% of the time, and probably make some mistakes, fix them later on, uh, just have progress so we don't get stuck, basically. So that's, um, that's again, more of like a mindset we have. With so many countries and cultures, um, languages, perspectives. Uh, we also kind of like have the yeah, format kind of thing. So that slide that says, okay, you know, everything is a bit different. You have different perspectives. Um, people see things differently. Uh, and you have to be aware of that. Because it's not like um, everybody's thinking in the same way. So you really have to be careful when you have an opinion or careful, just say it out loud, but also listen to others, right? Because they, they can look at things differently. Um, but that also, um, enriches our products because, for example, even the countries or time zones, you think about these things to translate an application or to make it uh, accessible for, uh, for people with disabilities, like these kind of things. So that really um, is, a, is a good uh, thing to, to keep in mind. And then somehow connected to that, as you are, um, so, for example, we, we all have accent, right? There, we have plenty of folks that are native, like US folks, but everybody else is, uh, has not the perfect English, I would say. And that's cool, right? We don't have to, you know, make it perfect. We just have to make sure everybody understands what we are saying. And um, there are languages, only one example, right? So uh, it could be other stuff. Basically, everything that's... Um, Every, every time there is a difference, really celebrate it and, and take it as, um, as a good input to whatever uh, perspective you are, you are giving. And then, last but not least, humble and ambitious. Um, and it's not only like, okay, it's a value we put on a website and that's, that's it to, you know, to make the hiring process better. It really is. Like, people are really humble uh, at the company and ambitious too. It's really a team effort, so you don't see it like people working on their own and uh, not like taking the team effort, it really uh, feels that way. So at least I've seen it across like my teams uh, with, with whom I worked with, but uh, um, other people are telling the same story. So it's definitely true. So one of the questions I, I also get is, okay, so how does a team look like? What's the process? 
Um, so this is, again, an actual photo of, of the team I'm working with. Um, so some people are missing, but we don't have a so It's up to the team to figure out what works for you. So d do you use Scrum? No, we don't. Do you use whatever tool? Uh, yeah, we could, right? It doesn't mean we have to use a company-wide. So for example, what we do is we have like a daily stand-up, but we do it on Slack, so it's asynchronous because of the time zones. Um, and that's basically it, so it's not like a process we have. But some people need that process, so it really is up to the team to figure out things out. So what we do is basically we do retrospectives once in a while and see what's working, what's not, improve it, and iterate. So that's our process, so really there is no, no process. Um, and then how do teams look like? So um, that also depends on the team, um, that's not always true, but um, within engineering, uh, that's like most of the time that's true, so um, we have like a mix of roles. So one is team lead, that's my role for example. We also have tech leads in the team and product leads in the team. And that's, as you can see even on that, on that slide, it's like a mixed effort of things. We also have like things um, in common, like we do like an overlap of, of responsibilities. And that's by design, so that's good to have a consensus on things, right? It's not like the product lead telling, okay, th these are the priorities, just implement it and we are done. No, it's a discussion of the three of us saying, okay, I would probably do this first and then work on that. And um, I even have, like, it's the slide is about leaders, but definitely there is also the team. <laughs> so um, they have also, like, um, a lot of, like, influence on, on what we are doing from a team side, from a tech side, so choosing the technology, how we work, but also what priorities we have on the roadmap. So um, basically, the leads are there to help them um, be uh, successful than the other way around, and that's definitely true. So then meetings, how many meetings do you have? Like most of the people say, okay, I'm always in, in meetings and I don't have to time for do real work. Um, so we try to limit the amount of meetings we have. So from my team's perspective and an engineering perspective, uh, this comes down to a weekly planning meeting, which takes 50 minutes. Uh, we do it um, synchronously over Zoom. Uh, then a one-on-one. -on -one because we are remotely, we have to talk to each other quite some time. So it could be a weekly one-on-one, -on -one, it could be bi-weekly one-on-one, -on -one, whatever works for you. I try to be between a weekly or bi-weekly kind of thing to, to have like a constant feedback loop uh, on both sides, right? And then we also have to uh, add some team time. So for example, we put in, in our calendar an hour where everybody is free to join. We just have a chat of topic. We talk about cats, dogs, whatever, right? So uh, just hang around and uh, you're not, that's totally optional. So. If, if you like, you can come. If not, that's totally fine. And uh, the last meeting is not recorded. So, oh, the one-on-one -on -one also not. So, yeah. Um, so, it's, uh, it's free to, uh, to be not there. There are also, like, uh, meetings across um, engineering, like the entire engineering, which is now at 1,000 people, um, demo days, and company audience, which is for everybody. Um, again, these are more like um, every four weeks. I think in, tr in terms of all these uh, listed here, there are others. But these are basically in the calendar, and the bigger the meeting gets, the more, the more you cannot go, right? Because it will be recorded, so you don't have to be on the spot unless you have a question or want to be up, up, to, up to date. But uh, yeah, you can just join, um, but you don't have to. So going to how we work again is like more, um, especially on the product side, like uh, our tooling, we have a so-called release train. Have you heard about this term? Uh, so it basically means uh, we have a phase of development, then we have feature freeze where we don't, uh, we, we can't really ship any, any more features. We just have then a phase of uh, quality assurance where we try to fix every bug we have spotted. And then the release, so basically everything after feature freeze go to the next release. And that's how we iterate. So it's kind of like pretty straightforward. And it's totally fine to not ship a feature. If you're not 100% sure it's like, um, it, it's working and it could break something, just wait for the next train, right? So you don't squeeze it in just the day before feature freeze. It's totally fine to not ship anything. That's also why we don't have a public roadmap because we don't want to commit to a feature, then they start the business process and then we would then say, okay, sorry, that feature didn't make it. Uh, so we try to be do it the other way around, right? Surprise you with the features uh, we are shipping and there is a ton of them. And as I said, we have like, uh, roughly six week release cycle. So if it doesn't make it now, it will be there in six weeks. So um, still easy. 
And then we also use the semantic versioning. So um, major minor and patches. Patches obviously for bug fixes whenever, yeah, there are some bugs, so we have to patch them. Uh, minor releases, uh, which is most of the time where we're just adding features, we don't do any BC breaks, so we can um, upgrade every time there is a new release. And then from time to time we do we do have to do a major release because we want br uh, we want to break some stuff um, and uh, it's not like backward compatible. We'll provide you with the docs how to upgrade, but it's not that easy as just hitting a button, uh, especially on cloud, right? Um, what we also do is from version 5, I think, all the products have, or most of the products have the same versioning. So Elasticsearch is at that level, uh, at that version, Kibana is at that, le uh, at that version, and uh, all the beats and such. So it's easier to know what's working with uh, what's, uh, yeah, in terms of like comp compatibility. There are obviously some downsides of working distributed or remotely, and I also wanted to highlight those. So one of the obvious ones is like the, the pain of time zones. It really is a pain. Uh, like, um, for example, I'm still, I feel lucky because our difference in the team is like nine hours. Uh, so you, the U.S. starts very early, like 6, 7 in the morning. Uh, Europe, like 10, 11. Uh, so we have a kind of an overlap when we want to talk to each other. But, um, yeah, it could be that people want to, in the U.S., to start at 10 and then um, in Europe at 7. So there would be little or no overlap at all. And then also some teams have, like, people really in Asia and Australia and then in the U.S. So it's really hard to sometimes schedule a meeting. Um, and the more people you have in the meeting, um, if you look at the Google Calendar, find a time option, and most of the time they will say you, tell you, oh, there is no good time for that because everything is blocked. So you kind of have to deal with that. Uh, so what we do instead, we try to uh, basically do whatever we can asynchronously over email um, to, or over Google Docs. And to, to work on these kind of things, but that's definitely a problem. So uh, that's also why we limited the meeting, the planning meeting, to only a single one, so everybody knows, okay, I have to be there uh, for these 15 minutes a week, but that's it, right? For example, all the one-on-ones um, I'm running uh, are mostly like good for the folks that are in that time zone, right? So I do it like 9, uh, 9, 9 a.m., but also 9 p.m. because of the time zones, but that's cool. Um, then communication can fail. Um, yeah, because we are we speak some languages and have different cultures. Sometimes or most of the time, you have to over communicate because you you just have to make sure that what you said was also what people um, ha um, have understood. So it's really important to um, to yeah to say it out loud and um, double check if everything is uh, as you meant. So as I said, cultures are different, and decisions can drag again. If you are not required to go in the meeting, sometimes we leave the meeting with no decision, right? Because, oh, you don't really know, we, we have to have that third or fourth opinion. Um, then we take it like we make a summary in an email, um, send it to everybody who was um, going to participate and have the decision at a later spot or do a separate meeting. But yeah, that's how things are, so not really a solution to that. So in terms of tooling, we use a Slack a lot. So Slack is our synchronous tool, all right? So um, who's using Slack? Okay, who's not using Slack? <laughs> Would be easier, okay. <laughs> so almost everybody, right? So, and probably if not Slack, then a different tool. Um, so it's, it's definitely easier than writing an email because it just takes so much time. And, um, and we try also to uh, have the office kind of feeling with a water cooler channel. So the water cooler channel is uh, so you're out of science uh, for every employee. So there are just random discussions and uh, a lot of like cat and dog pics. Um, but then also we have a lot of public channels. So you are, everything is open by, by default. So you, are, you can join whatever channel you want uh, and also create channels. And also when we have team discussions, we also prefer to do them in the public channel instead of like private messages, right? Because even if it's the discussion with two of you, there might be somebody interested in the very same answer or question or add something to that, right? So it's better to, to do it like in a public channel, uh, if that's not a private discussion, obviously. Then we use a lot of Zoom. Uh, so Zoom is our office equivalent. Um, so Zoom is basically it's like Skype or Hangouts, so it's a tool to, for video conferencing. Um, why Zoom and not the others? Because it scales at our size, uh, it still makes it possible to host a meeting with 1,500 employees or 1,600 employees at the time uh, when our CEO 
wants to give us an update uh, on what the company is doing. It also is great at screen sharing. Uh, you can even share like your desktop and somebody else takes control of your mouse if you want to uh, and such. And it also like has two cool features which we're missing from, I think, uh, from Hangouts and, and such. Uh, there is like um, auto recording, so every, every or almost every meeting, um, like the public ones are recorded and uploaded to the cloud so you can watch them later on. And there is also transcription, so you can, if you even have an hour-long meeting, there is a transcription of everything that was said, uh, so you can easily find if somebody mentioned you or there was a topic you, you were interested in. That's kind of cool, because it's also faster to scan and uh, read than uh, hear what they were saying. So yet another tool we use extensively is GitHub. Uh, so basically, because we build software, we also build software in the open source world. So um, it's, uh, it's open and wide, so you can see it. You can see also what we are doing as a company because we, 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 we work on issues, like uh, we work uh, in GitHub issues uh, most of the time. Um, and uh, we use GitHub also as a project management tool, but so we don't have Jira or anything like that but it's not perfect. It, we just can't afford yet another tool because that will limit the uh, open source community to get engaged, right? So we overuse GitHub a bit. Um, so we, for example, create, we call it meta issues, which is an issue which only links to the other issues uh, to have, like, to keep track of things or dependencies. It's not perfect, but yeah, that's how things are. And then definitely, um, G Suite or Gmail, basically, Google Drive and the calendar, which are our go-to tools for scheduling things, uh, keeping files uh, to share, and obviously email, lots of email. So for example, when I joined the company, it was most of the time it's Mondays. My Gmail account was created, I think, on Saturday. And by Monday morning, I had like a 1,000 emails already in the inbox. So you have to be really good at filtering because you get everything by default, like all the issues, all the pull requests, all the comments, all the comments, everything gets into your inbox. So you, I have like a list of, yeah, plenty of rules saying, okay, if I'm not mentioned directly, ignore it, right? So put it somewhere. Um, and that's cool. So you have to filter it basically. Um, so a bit on hiring. Um, we do a lot of hiring, as you've seen by the numbers. Um, so age, gender, location, race, and such, that's only an attribute, we don't look at that. Um, and in terms of skills, we also try to call them more technical and professional skills than hard and soft skills, uh, because um, especially like the so-called soft skills or professional skills in that regard are really important. So even if you are a great developer, if you can't really communicate over, like, re and working remotely and communicate well, it doesn't work out, right? You have to be good at that. And only then uh, bring your technical skills. We get around, uh, I think, a 1,000 CVs per week. That's on top of our own sourcing. So we obviously also reach out to people ourselves, especially as we have an open source community. So you know it's easier to just um, hire a contributor because they're already onboarded, kind of. Um, and we also um, do no bullshit interviews. So by no bullshit, I mean we don't ask a question of like how many golf balls would fit in a school bus kind of thing, the Google approach. So really try to um, figure out if it's a good fit uh, and, it, and, if you, and if it will work out for you uh, to work remotely and at the company. Um, we also try to, um, it's, so it was uh, not that good uh, some time ago, but we now do a maximum of five interviews because it just took, like I had eight, for example, it took three months to hire, so uh, quite some time. Um, yeah, so that was a problem. So we now limit it to five interviews, which is basically HR at the very beginning, then engineering uh, from a technical side, then team fit, and that's probably it. Uh, so it could be even three, but yeah, up to, up to five is cool. Um, and also, it's a shorter amount of time, right? So previously, we tried to have uh, an interview and only then say, okay, is it good or bad, and then schedule the next one, which, because of the time zones, may Okay, okay, it works. Okay, uh, so let's continue. So um, yeah, that's our hiring. In terms of numbers and how, we, how we've grown, it's like it took us uh, from 500 to 605 months, then from 600 to 703. 
and later on two, and probably now it's, uh, it's even faster. So again, what are these numbers saying? Is it good or bad? So again, these could say 87, is it good or bad? But I think the indicator would be how many arrivals we have. So for example, that's one, one sample, 130 arrivals and only nine departures. Uh, being like a company decision or the, the decision of that individual. Uh, so I think it's pretty good. So who wants to work from an office? And who wants to work from home? Okay. I think I have seen new hands. Like previously there were people like saying, okay, I don't work from home, but you now want to. So that's cool. Uh, we are not the only company uh, working remotely, right? So uh, even if you don't want to uh, join Elastic, uh, see all the other options, I think that's uh, really awesome. And as we have five minutes left, I'm happy to take some questions.